afternoon, everyone. Uh, I know you are quite late in the afternoon schedule, so I won't take much of your time. Start with an explanatory video, and then I'll elaborate on this. As an educationist, when I started looking into all the problems that we face, uh, you know, whether it's administrative issues uh, or whether it's capacity expansion, growth issues, uh, going to a bank today as a trust and asking them to, uh, you know, give us a loan, it is a very painful process. And you have the demand, you want to grow, you want to expand it like a regular business. The situation uh, that's happening in the Indian education field is quality of education is going up. But when quality of something goes higher, so does the price. Parents don't mind paying for it, but sometimes it's a problem, you know, uh, for them to put out that kind of money in large chunks, uh, in installments, two, three installments throughout the year. It's pressure on their monthly paycheck. Uh, on the other hand, when you look at educationists and you look at uh, institutions, their biggest problem is the mismanagement between inflow of capital, which can be delayed um, and sometimes painful in terms of recovery, so what is the finance sphere effect? What we've noticed is that the minute a school, a college, an institution, a university comes on board with finance sphere, on the one end, there is a 30, 35% increase in admissions because suddenly it's much more comfortable as a situation for parents who can't deploy a large chunk, a third, a fourth of the annual fees in one go. They find it really easy now. And with the parents, they're really happy because they, unlike most other scenarios, have no processing fee, no hidden charges, no extra cost for an EMI. So for them, it's a dream come true. What happens with the institution is it's truly liberating because now they're not you know, carrying debt on their balance sheets. Uh, they have very large percentage, 100% of, of their fees to be collected through the year coming up front. And now they are allowed to deploy that free cash flow, that capital in expansion or pairing of debt or any kind of growth activity that they require. So it's liberating for both sides. To us, Finance Sphere is not just about money lending and collection. Uh, it's empowering institutions. Uh, our idea is to work with institutions like partners, collaborations. Um, we're very confident. When we come on board as Finance Sphere, we bring in a whole bunch of things. The Finance Sphere family uh, brings in an entire next gen attitude, an entire futuristic approach to the education finance solution. But with the finance peer family, the smart cards that we bring in, imagine that a child enters a school and attendance is already done, right? It's completely automated. A teacher knows, you know, in a minute, how many kids are in school, where they are, and what time they're there. A parent knows the exact location of where the child is, whether the child is on a bus, whether the child is in the classroom, whether the child is on the playground. Uh, this kind of awareness gives a great sense of comfort even to the parents that the children are safe. The parents can control where this child can spend money, can communicate with people, can get SMSs, video calls, phone calls from peers, friends, family members. And this is something incredible. Uh, the kind of reaction that we're seeing in our 312 plus schools and colleges as partners with more than 160,000 students. Everywhere we've run beta test trials with these uh, smart cards and smart watches. People are loving this. Now this is just the tip of the iceberg. The whole idea of finance peer is to be that support network for our educationists, for our institutional partners to keep innovating and bring in new ideas, new technologies that make the quality of the education and the entire experience of a student life much better. So all I want to say finally is welcome to the finance peer family, the future of education. Yeah, so I'd just like to elaborate on what uh, Vivek just said. Right, to finance pure basically is trying to address a larger market uh, because everyone is trying to get a better quality education. So every educator is trying to increase the quality of education through various mediums. Uh, 
either add infrastructure facilities. There's a lot of pairing done with the edtech firms, which we heard right now, bringing in new technologies into the system. But all, bringing all of this uh, incurs cost, right? Now, who is going to bear this cost? Uh, if you go back to the parents and tell them they have to pay upfront, you might uh, lose on admissions because of the increase in cost. So what we have seen is, although the poorest of the poor parents uh, demand for better quality education, the parents are also demanding for flexible payment options which in an Indian legal system is uh, very difficult because a schooling system in India basically on uh, legal terms cannot recover funds from a parent, right? So even if a parent makes a partial payment, they cannot recover the full amount from them. So that's why a schooling institution typically prefers to get the entire fees as one shot in one installment. On the contrary, they offer a maximum of three to four installment option to a parent. So where Finance Pure, what they're trying to do here is trying to reduce this fee collection hassle. On one hand, uh, we will pay the entire year collection to the institutions right up front on day one. Whatever their collection is, be it 10 crores, 100 crores, or a larger number, they will get their entire fee collection right on day one. And we will collect it from the parents in a zero cost EMI options. So this is valid not only for fees, uh, it's valid for all the uh, transportation facilities, hostels, or the ed techs that you have paired up with we will pay on their behalf and then the customers can take a zero cost EMI facility as simple as they're buying a laptop or a mobile phone, they take a zero cost option, they can pay their fees in a similar fashion as well. So I'll briefly walk through the benefits to an institution and a parent. Of course, a zero cost EMI is a major benefit to the parent, but uh, one more feature that we have which is quite critical and has helped us with uh, the more than 500 schools that we're working with, if anything happens to the parent, of a child studying in say standard three, right? If the, uh, he meets an accident or uh, critical illness, we finance peer will provide for the education of that child, not only for that year, but for all the remaining years. So there's definitely no dropout happening. We will provide for the education for all the years. So this is one of the key features that we have come up with and we are doing it across the country today, trying to provide for education, uh, even for the poorest of the kids, so that they can also avail the quality education that you all are providing. On the other hand, for the schools, yes, you collect your fees, 100% fees upfront. Another important aspect is there is no liability. There is no security that the school has to provide. So if the parents are not going to pay us back, we will not come back to the school. That's our loss, right? Whatever happens is completely our loss. What we have seen when we launched this product, especially a lot of boarding schools that we have worked with, we have seen an average of 27% increase. If you go in the Dehradun side, the average increase in admissions is more than 35%, but if you do it pan India, we have seen that much happening because it's much more simpler for a sales team today to just go to a parent and say, don't give me the check, just take an admission and try it out. Because it's ultimately we who are going to pay the fees to the institution, right? Uh, there's no dropouts. They've seen huge reduction in dropouts because we have already paid the fees. Now parents doesn't have to think twice, especially even a rich parent understands that anything can happen to him. And when there's someone who's going to provide not only for his schooling, but also for his higher education, then no parent would not want to take this option. Of course, the funds that your institution receives up front, they can have a ROI, a return on investment of 15, 20%, or they can put their funds up front and expand the infrastructure as well. So these are some of the key facilities that we have come up with, uh, and Vivek was also trying to explain. So we are exploring this. We are already working uh, with more than 312. We have ran through a couple of years, uh, has big universities. We have Garden City. We have the entire Jain group of institutions with us. We have Sri Sri Ravi Shankar group with us, uh, Millennium, Padma Shishadri, a lot of groups. We have also backed up uh, by different banking industry, by Google, and a lot of international and domestic banks as well. So we're trying to reach out to a larger community, and we thought uh, participating in such an event uh, would help us reach out to them. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's a win-win scenario for each uh, institution here. So we are open to exploring what help can we provide so that you can also adopt and uh, partner with all these ed tech firms that you want to and provide those education. Because that, that's the facility that we can come and uh, provide it to you all. So we want, would happily welcome all of you all to finance per family as well and grow together. Uh, to be a part, uh, you can either reach out to us on the email given there or on the number mentioned. We have a small stall outside where officials will also explain the product to you. So if we need to understand how this operates and how we can work this on a much, much larger scale uh, in India and abroad, then please uh, meet our officials outside. So I think we will have to wrap up here and not take any more time and you all can go for lunch after this. Thanks a lot. We'll keep in touch. Thank you.